Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Daniel Eschelin. As a new member of the International Advisory Board of the Movement for Neutrality of Montenegro, I'd like to welcome you to this very important international conference. As an organization, we are subject to intense media blackout by the current government of Montenegro, which is a puppet of NATO and related intelligence agencies and shadowy structures. I hope me joining the organization can help us turn the tide in our favor. Where we sit right now is very much like 1929, not in the sense that we should expect a Great Depression, but that institutions are starting to break down, break apart, shift alliances, and lots of planning for changes in institutions is going forward and being affected. We're seeing tremendous amounts of asymmetrical warfare. We are witnessing to what is happening in the Balkans. The fundamental motivation for that military adventurism had little to do with the Balkans and a lot with the impending blow-up of the globalized financial bubble, which is still being pumped up daily by Wall Street and the City of London. Once the financial oligarchy had taken the decision to keep pumping the strengthening of the new NATO as the modern globalized version of the British imperial structure, it became the only way to keep control of a world situation that was exploding in opposition to the speculative looting required to feed the bubble. The financier oligarchist's aim was and is to destroy every vestige of the sovereignty of the nation state, from the United States to Russia, Yugoslavia, Indonesia, Malaysia, not to mention through the now infamous color revolutions and so on. Of course, this financial and monetary shift is not new. Let's go back to the beginning of the 1990s and the creation of the World Trade Organization and the decision taking at the highest levels of the supranational power structures to rebalance the global economy, shift capital out of the G7 nations, reinvest including in the emerging markets, and shift capital into what I refer to as the breakaway civilization. One of the ways to achieve their goals was breakup of countries. This has been the plan from way before the war in Yugoslavia, pushed by Madeleine Albright, then supporter of Djukanovic. Albright and the United States government's ultimate goal was to create a coalition that would have included Montenegro, the Kosovo Liberation Army, and the Serbian opposition to Milosevic, a coalition that would have taken over not just Montenegro, but the whole of Yugoslavia, and implement the currency board reform, eliminating any remains of sovereignty. The uh, question about war brings up the age-old question of the central bank and warfare model, and the dependency of the US dollar on the success of the military and the costs of that in many different ways. Today, the United States government is the provider of global enforcement, and they're having more and more trouble enforcing, and their behavior is getting uglier and uglier. Of course, keeping the dollar system working to pay for the entire global enforcement is getting harder and harder to do to keep everybody in the fray. Amongst other things, it means Montenegro will have to have their part or to play their part for the American cause if they want to stay relevant from the United States vantage point. As Western countries move investment into the emerging markets, their satellites and military move to police this global investment. Investors do not invest where they cannot enforce. So in a sense, financial is pressing countries like Montenegro to be part of this global military empire. But at what cost? Is Montenegro joining forces with the United States to confront Russia and China? Are you sure this is a winning proposition for a small, small country that traditionally supportive of both Serbia and Russia? In today's nuclear age, the consequences of a geopolitical policy of confrontation with Russia and China can only be the thermonuclear extinction of the human race. Therefore, every effort must be made to cooperate to solve the multiple crises facing humanities. 
the BRICS nations have united to pursue a policy of economic development, not just for their individual countries, but for the benefit of the people of all nations. Their initiatives are not geopolitical in nature. And contrary to the Trans-Pacific Partnership advocated by the United States government, which excludes Russia and China, the BRICS-related initiatives, including the Chinese proposed free trade area of the Asian Pacific are inclusive. They're based on the concept expressed by the late Pope Paul VI that the new name of peace is development based on cooperation. The policy of conducting color revolutions under the pretext of democracy represents a policy of war, even if that term is not used, because its aim is to topple governments with the aid of foreign money. It has to stop. The campaign to impose sanctions on Russia for its opposition to such color revolutions and to a Nazi coup in Ukraine is only exacerbating the global crisis, an approach based on mutual cooperation to achieve the common ends of mankind throughout Eurasia and beyond would instead create the basis for global peace. While the United States has abandoned the Kennedy Space Program, the Chinese are committed to a lunar program focused on the exploitation of helium-3 for the purpose of generating unlimited fusion energy. I therefore call upon the government of Montenegro to abandon the suicidal geopolitical policies of the recent past and to build a future for all humanity by readopting the principle of the Treaty of Westphalia, by basing foreign policy on the principle of the benefit of the other, which ended 30-year war in Europe, and on John Quincy Adams's concept of a community of principle among sovereign nation states. This is the only course coherent with the true nature of man as the only creative species. Any other course is based on the concept of man as an animal and leads to human extinction. As patriots of our own nations and as citizens of the world, we call on our fellow citizens and the leaders of our nations to have the courage to break the current cycle of escalating bestiality, to embrace peace, and to do all we can to eliminate the militarism as the answer to the world's differences. Thank you very much.